beautiful Sunday, and welcome to all who are joining us online. You may be seated. And our gathering chorus this morning is, I will enter his gates. that if we thank you in the midst of difficult moments, 
It is a sign of our trust in you. We ask you to forgive us, Lord, for all the times we lack trust and instead build mountains out of molehills and waste time and energy worrying and fearing and dreading things that often don't even materialize. Forgive us, Lord, for failing to trust in you, especially in the midst of trials and crises. Forgive us for all the times we forget that you are with us, that you love us, and that you are watching over us. Lord God, you want us to trust you every day, and we miss out on peace and joy and contentment when we don't. And so we pray and ask you to help us to trust in you more and to recognize all the ways you are at work among us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your faithfulness in loving us and for always hearing us when we speak to you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. God calls us to confess our sins not so that he can chastise or punish us, but so he can forgive us and set us free from the burden of sin. His mercy is endless, and through our faith in Christ, our sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand now for our responsive reading this morning, which is Psalm 23. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Johnny Frostick is 46 years old. He lives and works in England, and he experienced what none of us would ever want, but each of us at one time will fear. 
For Johnny, it was a perfect weekend just a month ago. After his morning coffee, he strolled through a local park, did some window shopping, had a leisurely lunch, and then sat down to organize the work week. Suddenly, without warning, he experienced frightening chest pains. And rather than think about his own safety, his immediate thoughts were about work. I can't be having a heart attack. I have a meeting with the manager tomorrow. And what about my appointments with the clients? In the midst of overwhelming pain, his first thoughts were about his job. And then way down on the mental checklist was, I haven't updated my will, and I hope my wife doesn't find me dead. Well, fortunately, his wife was nearby, and she called emergency services, and Johnny was rushed to hospital. He survived, and fortunately, his heart attack has not left any permanent damage to his vital organs. But lying in the hospital, Johnny resolved there and then to reevaluate his priorities and make some immediate changes. According to Johnny, these changes included, number one, I'm not spending all day on Zoom anymore. Number two, I'm restructuring my approach to work and the people I work with. Number three, I am no longer going to mentally obsess about people who are difficult or mean because life is literally too short. Four, I am going to lose 30 pounds and exercise more. Five, I am going to make my family my first priority. <coughs> through the LinkedIn internet platform, through the LinkedIn internet platform, Johnny Frostick's experience has gone viral around the world and tens of thousands of people have responded with similar stories affirming the importance of Johnny's abrupt life changes. Johnny Frostick's own response to his heart attack points all of us to perhaps the most important question we will ever ask in our lives. And that is, what really matters? Johnny realized that making his work his number one goal is not what really matters. He realized that allowing his mental peace to be robbed by rethinking and rehashing the mean words and actions of others over and over again is not what really matters. Tens of thousands of people reading about Johnny's experience have also come to reassess their own lives and priorities by asking themselves what really matters. Church family, this is not a new question. It is something that wise people have asked themselves for thousands of years. And we might even argue that this very question lies at the core of our faith in Christ. In fact, let's read what Jesus said about this very issue from Matthew chapter 6, beginning to read at verse 25. Jesus is speaking, and this is what he says. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? 
For it is the Gentiles who strive for all these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these other things will be given to you as well. These are very powerful words because Jesus strikes at the heart of the types of everyday fears and anxieties we're all dealing with. The everyday things like food and drink and clothing or in the midst of our own hectic schedules, we might even say to ourselves, okay, I need to do laundry to make the lunches. Somehow I need to find time to get groceries. I need to do it before or after a crazy day at work. And I need to make time to see mom. And then the taxes are due. Oh, where's the money going to come from for that? And I have to book and call to make those appointments. And please, God, whatever happens, don't let anything happen to the car because we can't afford another repair bill. And you know it. You live it each and every day. And the list of everyday fears and anxieties grows and grows. And in the midst of it all, Jesus calls us to ask the question, what really matters? Now Jesus doesn't say, throw off your responsibilities. No, no. Instead, he says, in the midst of doing those responsibilities, and then having these anxieties and fears that we're dealing with, we're to ask the question, what really matters? In verse 33 of Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Jesus says, Seek first the kingdom of God. And I ask you this morning, when is this kingdom of God supposed to take place? Well, let's think about that for a moment. As part of the church family here at St. Mark's, whether we are here or watching online, you are part of the kingdom of God right now. And we join with millions of Christians around the world who are all part of the kingdom of God right now. So the kingdom of God is something that is happening right now, but it's not just for now. In fact, what really matters about the kingdom of God is what is to come in the future for all eternity. Notice that in our New Testament lesson, when Jesus talks about the birds of the air or the grass of the field, it isn't a lament about what has been in the past. Instead, Jesus calls for a letting go of the anxieties that are right now and an embracing of the goodness and the joy that is yet to come. Looking ahead with faith and hope as we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness is another way we answer the question, what really matters? So if we seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, it helps us answer this question. But I think most people are grappling with something that has to take place first. In the midst of the everyday worries and stresses and anxieties and those thoughts that get into your mind that hang on you like a yoke, we know we want to get to that point where we are able with perspective to seek first the kingdom of God, but how do we get there when we're struggling with what's in here and especially with what's in here? I think the answer comes in one word. And I'd like to suggest to you that that answer in one word is joy. Listen to what we read about joy. In Romans chapter 15, may the God of hope fill you with all joy as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope 
by the power of the Holy Spirit. In Psalm 16, you make known to me the path of life. You fill me with your joy in your presence. And Jesus himself in John 16, so you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and then you will rejoice and no one will rob you of that joy. In each of these promises, and we could go through scores of other scriptural promises about joy. There is something very common and similar in them all. And that is joy is inseparably linked to our relationship with God. So the more we choose to have joy, the more we are able to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And in so doing, we are better able to answer the question, what really matters? <clears throat> when I was in my teens, if I was worried or upset, my mom would usually pray for me. And then for fun, we would watch an episode of the Flintstones. And we would have a good laugh. In the midst of my worries, there was also my mother's oft-repeated expression of care when she would say, Tom, what will this matter five years from now? She was right. If what I was worried about wouldn't matter in five years, then why was I worrying about it now? And by worrying, all I did was rob myself of peace and joy. Instead, I wasn't able to ask myself the question, what really matters? Church family, as a means of helping us decide if we have the right priorities and perspective, I'd like to suggest something that we can all do every morning. Let's begin the day by taking a moment to bow our head and to ask God to help us, first of all, prioritize the things that truly count by asking, will this matter five years from now? And secondly, including in your day, 10 or 15 minutes of something that will make you laugh and bring you joy. And maybe that is calling a friend, maybe it's taking a walk, maybe it's going for a coffee, maybe it's reading a chapter of a book, listening to your favorite song, taking a few minutes for a hobby, even maybe watching an episode of The Flintstones. Whatever will bring you joy. Johnny Frostick's heart attack was a serious wake-up call that his priorities were all wrong and that the things that were giving him stress and anxiety are things that really don't matter long-term. And so he has made changes. And those changes have not only decreased his stress and anxiety, they have increased his satisfaction and joy. Jesus encourages each one of us to do the same. In Matthew chapter 6, he says, Do not worry about your life. Instead, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Jesus reminds us that when we set the right priorities, when we put God first and seek his guidance into our lives and inject joy into every day, Everything else will fall into place because we'll be focused on what really matters. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, it's easy to be worried and overwhelmed. It's easy to lose sight of the right priorities. So help us each day to stop and ask you to help us answer the question, of what really matters, and then to live out our days with that in mind. Thank you, Lord, that you are always with us, and that you want us to enjoy this life. And please continue to guide and direct us, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Just a couple of announcements. The fund script order will be going in next week, so if you'd like to order any, uh, put an order in, you can leave an order today or pick up an order form from the elders in the foyer. And also a reminder that today is the final day to receive the yellow ballots for the ordination of the new elders. So if you had picked up a ballot, today's the last day to drop it in one of the ballot boxes. And we have a couple of things to celebrate. Um, Wayne McPherson always says we grow them smart here and talented at St. Mark's. <laughs> and we have all kinds of things to celebrate this week. And Stephanie and Tabitha have done some more competing. We had announced you a few weeks ago about a dance competition. They've done um, some more competing. And we are very proud of them and happy to announce that they won gold in each of the categories in which they competed, got the highest mark, and also um, at least one of their, their dances was considered so um, extraordinary that it's been put in the vault. Is that what you said, Mom? Yeah. <laughs> Which, so they've, uh, they've done, they've outdone themselves this time. So congratulations, Stephanie and And I've been, I've been asked by a couple of people why we didn't mention the following. And they say, one person said this morning, like, I, I understand why you might not have, but you should. So, um, we're also very proud to announce, many of you mentioned to us about seeing it in the paper, that uh, Rachel is graduating in a, a few weeks and was awarded the uh, Brendan Curley Scholarship for the highest overall mark over her four years at UPEI in uh, history, and has also won a number of entry scholarships to Queen's University, where she'll be pursuing her master's degree, and also was awarded a Social Science and Humanities Research Council research grant. And on Friday, just defended her honors thesis for her bachelor. So she's a busy young lady right now. We're very proud of you, Rachel. Very proud. It's always great to celebrate. And so please let us know if there's any celebrations in your families that we can announce and so we can all share in the joy together. And as we prepare for a time of prayer, Evelyn is going to bless us with music by singing Shepherd of My Life.
it's so easy for us to be overwhelmed by work and commitments and our daily tasks. And in the midst of our days, we can become so focused on those tasks that we forget to take time to enjoy life and to make spending time with those we love a priority. Lord, help each one of us to take a few minutes at the beginning of each day and ask you to guide us to answer the question, what really matters? And then help us to set priorities that will truly reflect what is most important to us. And Lord, in the midst of our days, remind us to do as Tom suggested, to take time to laugh and to allow ourselves to be blessed by the goodness in our lives. Loving God, you have promised that you lead us into green pastures. And we pray for all those who are tired or worried or anxious, that you will give rest and refreshment to all who are weary or distressed. Lord God, you have promised to lead us beside quiet waters. We live in a busy world filled with endless noise and activity that distracts us from you. Help us to take time to be still, to pray, and to simply be with you. Loving God, you've reassured us that we are not to fear evil because you are with us as we pass through the dark valleys of life. Please give each one of us a renewed sense of your presence, and please bless us with strength and hope. Lord, you have given us life, and you restore our souls. So we pray for the needs of our church family this day, and pray that you will bless each one in body, in mind, or in spirit as they have need. We pray for continued healing and recovery for Sarah McDonald and for Natalie Jameson as they each recover from surgery. We pray for Betty Ald and for Jeanette Barlow and for all who are dealing with ongoing health issues that you will strengthen and encourage them. And we pray also for Chrissy McCarville Keogh as she's undergoing treatment that you will give her courage and strength. Loving God, we pray for all those who are facing trials and difficulties and worries, that you will give them guidance and direction and the assurance that you are with them. We give you thanks, loving God, for all those times when we have found peace in the midst of turmoil, when we have had happiness after moments of strife, and when insight has emerged from times of confusion. Open our eyes to all the ways that you are at work in our lives to see that our cup indeed overflows. And we pray all this, giving thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. And our closing praise this morning is, God will take care of you. <clears throat> Yeah.